Hey grade nines, I'm gonna do a short video with you guys and girls on how to choose a good scale for your graph. So we did do some graphing review. Well, some, uh, this is really just a continuation of the lesson um, on choosing a scale. Okay, so I'm gonna do some of your homework. So this is the question that is um, from the graphing practice. So here's what I need to graph. I have to look at food intake per day and the amount of weight gained, okay? So this is gonna be on my X axis. So I can see here that my largest value is 2,500 grams. And then the weight gain, I can see for my Y axis because weight gain is going to depend on, remember this is my dependent variable, dependent. So that dependent variable, that weight gain, is going to depend on the food intake for the day. So that sort of makes sense. Uh, the instructions tell me to label the axes, including units. I need to choose an appropriate scale. Remember, an appropriate scale is a scale that allows me to um, make sure that I fill about 75% of the graph that I've been given. Okay. Um, and again, this food intake, this is my independent, right? That is what I'm varying, or that's what's varied maybe perhaps in my experiment. Uh, I gotta put some data points on here. I need to make sure I have a good title. And then it asks me to draw a smooth curve through the data points. Usually what I wanna do is I wanna look ahead to see if there are any questions that will require me to use, a, let's say, a line of best fit and to extrapolate. In this case, I didn't have to, so I'm not really concerned about choosing a scale that goes beyond my data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my scale for my x-axis. So on my x-axis, I know it's going to be food intake. So food intake. And I put my units in brackets. So that is in grams. Fantastic. So. My largest value is 2,500. Remember, I wanna count the number of ticks on my graph. So I'm literally gonna count. That looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's a really simple calculation for me to do because I'm literally going to do, and I'm just, the only reason I'm gonna show you this is, uh, cause I, I already know 2,500 divided by 10, it's 250. But that's all I'm gonna do on my calculator. So if I have some values that are not very nice, um, I may want to, again, I'm gonna round up. In this case, I, didn't, I don't have to, but it's 2,500, and I'm gonna divide that by the number of ticks. So it's my maximum data value divided by the number of ticks on my graph. That's gonna give me about 250. So what that means is each tick will be 250. Remember, I want to start my graph at zero. So that's going to be zero. That's going to be 250. So each one is 250. That's going to take me up to 500. And that will take me to 750. Oops. And that's going to take me up to 1,000. I'm going to have to write smaller. I'm never going to make it. <laughs> and then 1250, 1500. And then I'm going to have 1750, 2000, and I believe I've got 2500. Oh, did I do something wrong here? Let me see what I've got here. 250, 500, 750, 1000, 1250, 1500, 1750, yeah, 2000. Oh, sorry, 20. I'm good. Sometimes we have to double check these things. And 2,500. Okay, so possibly you can write smaller than I am. Um, and that looks like a good scale. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same for my y-axis. So I can see there my largest value is 56. That my y-axis, I need to make sure I put a proper um, label. So that is weight gain in pounds, all right? So I'm just gonna turn this around and put weight gain. So weight gain in pounds. 
So I can put LBS for pounds. Perfect. So I'm just going to use my unit for pounds, LBS. So that's what pounds stand for. So I'm going to count my number of ticks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My largest value is 56. So I'm going to take 56 and I'm going to divide into that 8 ticks on my graph. So I get about 7. Well, I'm not sure that I like 7 as a value. I want to make sure that I'm using a good friendly number. I never want to round down to 5 because I'm not going to be able to fit my data points in. Because if I were to choose 5, that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So it would only take me up to 40. I wouldn't be able to fit in all of my data points. So I'm going to round that up to 10. 10 is a nice friendly number that I'd rather work with. So I want to make sure that I'm working with a scale that's reasonable. So that's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Fantastic. The only thing that I'm missing from my graph before I begin plotting is a good title. So I want to make sure that it is whatever is on my y-axis versus whatever is on my x. Food intake per day, uh, per day um, or sorry, whoops, weight gain um, versus daily food intake or something like that. So it's whatever is on my y-axis, so weight gain versus, again, it's whatever is on my y-axis, weight gain versus daily food intake. Okay, probably could have moved that over and centered it. And then maybe we, you know, we use a ruler, we can underline it. Hooray. Okay, now that I underline it, I realize I didn't really write it that, that straight across, but I think that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, plot my data. So there is 0, 0. Um, again, food intake 502. Okay, so 500. It may be a little challenging to get two on here, but again, I would visually dissect. That would be halfway in between would be 5. So that's probably in and around 2. I may want to make a small dot, and that small dot may be hard to see. So what might help uh, bring some attention to that dot is putting a circle around it. So that's going to bring attention to my data point. So that's a little tip as you're graphing that may help you out. 1,005, so 1,000, halfway in between 0 and 10 would be 5. So again, small dot, I'm going to put a circle around it. Okay, next one here, 1,518. So 1,518, halfway in between 10 and 20 would be 15, and I'm going to visually dissect, that's approximately 18. The next point here, 2,031. So 2,000, and I need to go just beyond, 31 is approximately there. And then the last point, 2,556. So 55 and maybe about 56 is there. So that looks like um, good plotted data. I've done a good job with my scale. I filled about 75% of my graph. And then I'm going to attempt to draw a smooth curve. Oh, I didn't quite make that point uh, through my data. So I'm trying to do my best to draw a smooth curve. So it definitely looks like this is not linear. How do I know if I put a ruler on it? That does not look like linear data. It doesn't really sort of fit like a good line. So a smooth curve in that case was a little more appropriate to fit my data. And plus the instructions asked me to draw a smooth curve. So again, just to recap, in order to choose a good scale for your graph, I need to make sure I count up the number of ticks. Fantastic. Um, on either axis. So again, I'll just use the example of my y-axis. So my y-axis, I counted eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I look at my largest value on my y-axis, which was 56. And I take 56, I divide it into that eight. I got seven. Seven is not a nice friendly number. I'm gonna round that up to 10. And that's how I was able to choose a good scale um, to fit uh, to fit all my data points in. 
I'm hoping that helps you guys and girls with choosing a good scale and allows you to finish up part four and uh, set you up really nicely for our graphing assignment. All right, that's it for today, grade nines. I'm gonna go back to and pause. All right, till next time.